Mr. Sajdawa, today we saw the Aishar Pro 2055, the EV truck, which is dubbed as the smart city truck from Aishar. Please give us a brief snapshot about what is behind this vehicle in terms of EV, why you chose a 5.5 ton segment. Uh, as you know that cities are getting congested and uh, pollution is also a very, very uh, major problem in the cities. So we were looking at in the last mile, we should bring some zero carbon emission weight. That was the vision for us and uh, then we chosen as the EV technology uh, which is very suitable for the last mile vehicle as well as for the city application where the range required is not very high. It is about 150 to 200 kilometer. So the charging need is not that high as it is there in the long distance truck. So from that angle when we talk with our customers which are primarily uh, parcel and courier and e-commerce segment when we talked with them and uh, they were very keen on this type of product and uh, they were looking forward to actually this because they also have a sustainability goal for their organizations and they wanted to switch over to the zero emission vehicle like uh, what we are offering. So when we talked with them, we understood the need in terms of what should be the uh, cargo uh, requirement in terms of tonnage as well as we also made sure that uh, they wanted some advanced digital feature in the vehicle like how much space in the cargo board is getting utilized that they want to have the online information as well as range also range anxiety is very common so they wanted the online range uh, need also that how much range is available for the vehicle and uh, which are the charges available nearby the vehicle those type of information apart from designing and developing the vehicle. So we wanted to design and develop a vehicle which is not uh, just uh, converted from diesel to EV. But we wanted to design a vehicle which is a uh, upside designed for the EV application. From that angle, we wanted to have the EXL, we wanted to have the battery charging system, OBC charging system. We wanted to have that uh, chiller system to keep the battery safe and cool as well as the battery management system and I am very happy to share that uh, battery management system used in this vehicle is a in-house developed thing so that we can provide the best feature in our vehicle which are not there in the competition vehicle. Like you know that we are range, ka we are today mileage ka basha. All our vehicle what we make in VCV they are the best, they offer the best mileage to our customer. So here also our endeavor was to we should offer a EV vehicle which is a we are a, a range kabasha earlier we were mileage kabasha now we are range kabasha so if you have to offer the best range out of the stipulated battery capacity a lot of work need to be done on the software so that we can avoid usage of any unwarranted use of energy in the vehicle and have the at that very very optimum level for that matter regeneration and all the auxiliary power supply there also we want to conserve the energy. All that energy what we are saving through the regeneration and the, through the auxiliary consumption that we are using for enhancing the range of the vehicle. Fantastic. Fantastic. So that's what we have done that thing and uh, uh, which uh, so far we have sold few numbers and uh, whatever number we have sold to customers and uh, they are very delighted. Vehicle uptime is very high and they are able to get the re required range and of course if it is a VC product it will be a safe product. Unlike some incidents we hear in the two wheelers and other thing where the thermal incident and other things are there. So a lot of care and effort has gone into that what should be the, our battery strategy, what should be our pack strategy, what should be our all the cabling and integration uh, looping which we have done in the vehicle, how we should do that and how we keep the driver aware about the efficiency of the system he is using that thing. So that vehicle is not only operationally efficient but also it is safe. So that's our result and we are very confident that this will actually be liked by all our customers to whom we are doing this. Perfect, perfect. You mentioned about uh, you know the fleet trials with mm. partners and about uh, the feedback. Yeah. Uh, was there an initial apprehension by them and how did you solve it like because they have multiple options in CNG, LNG and how do you con convince them that EV for last mile is the best suited option as of now? You see that uh, uh, CNG and LNG has got the emission level which are only about 15% lesser than diesel. They are better than diesel of course but <coughs> they are only 15% lesser uh, than uh, diesel. They are not a zero emission or zero carbon vehicle. So still they are polluting. Right. So from that angle if you go to like uh, I want to name uh, one of our customers like uh, 
Amazon, when we talk with them, their organization from US, Seattle also have got the sustainability goals. So they were looking at a vehicle which is actually a zero carbon vehicle, which CNG, LNG are not. So from that angle, uh, they were very keen and looking forward to. And uh, since we were the number one to enter this market and uh, all the input, what we had taken from them and deployed that thing, they seem to be very happy. Whatever trial have gone by, they are very comfortable and uh, overall results are very, very positive. At this point. Would you be also extending the service network that is available in the other ranges to the EV customers as well? No, here, uh, as I, uh, in my earlier uh, thing, I told that uh, uh, range is uh, very, very important. Anxiety should not be there that yeah. when a person is operating this thing. So that means he want to know where the charger is available, where the charging station is there, where we can take the vehicle. So that is uh, one aspect uh, uh, we have kept in mind. Before selling the vehicle, any location in India, we have created a very, very stipulated do's and don'ts and protocol that the vehicle will be delivered after the charging infrastructure is linked with that in his territory, whether it's a dealership or in the public place, we have a charging infrastructure, that's number one. Second question, what you asked on the aftermarket side, we are very uh, careful about that thing because uh, VCV strategy is also to offer the best in class uptime. So they're ensuring that one is that our uh, uh, mechanics are trained, there's a diagnostic, uh, automatic diagnostic kits are available where uh, we can know just pointing the mobile toward the vehicle, we can know that uh, we have got a software. Once you put on the software and uh, app is there, you put on the app and after that you point the, point the mobile toward the vehicle. So it tells that uh, which aspect is not functioning as per the specification. We call that is an augmented reality uh, diagnostic uh, app. That's what we call that. And once that uh, uh, information is available, which part is uh, faulty or malfunctioning, after that it is uh, corrected by the uh, mechanic. So training of the mechanic, ensuring the right diagnostic tools are available, ensuring that uh, all the parts are available which are uh, suitable for uh, the EV vehicle. So this is a priority for us. That's why we have opened few market today, like NCR South and Hyderabad, few of the market we have opened so that we should be fully prepared from the aftermarket side to offer the best in class uptime as well as ensure that the charging infrastructure is available and uh, there should not be any range, range anxiety to our uh, customer or fleet owner. Now, be now given that you operate in all the verticals, uh, is there a, a chance that uh, you know the vehicle that you have launched in this category uh, is there a possibility that it may compete with any other products of yours or do you think EV domain uh, is created for Aisha, this tonnage is actually an exclusive one for the segment? No, uh, this uh, vehicle, equivalent vehicle is available in diesel also, 5.5 ton is available in diesel also. So here we wanted uh, uh, to provide a tonnage capacity which was required by our customer. So we found that this was a sweet spot for uh, our customer and for the city application. And uh, that's why we kept this GVW. Now answering this question that uh, uh, two product, EV and diesel, they've got a totally different uh, uh, total cost of economy. Total cost of, uh, total cost of ownership is totally different for both the vehicle. Acquisition cost uh, is um, higher in EV and uh, whereas in diesel it is lower, but running cost in EV is lower as compared to in diesel. So it is uh, to start with, I would say that initially we are going to the customer we un who understand the concept of uh, total cost of ownership. Like most of customer in India, which are single fleet, single vehicle owner or first time users, their focus on the acquisition cost is very high. So our immediate, uh, I would say that uh, uh, segment of customer to whom we attack with this product is not the FTU, first time user, but we want to go to the organized customers like e-commerce and some more segment pharmaceutical, e-commerce, who value the total cost of ownership rather than the only acquisition cost. So we are uh, placing this, both the product, positioning these products totally differently. Uh, diesel is for the low cost of ownership and uh, this is for the total cost of ownership. EV is for the total cost of ownership. Lastly, given the landscape that you see in this the LMD space and of course the last mile space, what are your medium to long term goals or plans for this EV segment? EV segment, uh, uh, you see that uh, uh, since uh, uh, our R&D in VCV is on the uh, network of Volvo R&D, 
so we have got access to all the technology as well as the strategy what europe is looking at in the ev side so once we look at their uh, fuel alternate fuel roadmaps over next uh, 30 years that roadmap is available to us and we are, we, we strongly feel that uh, that roadmap will be applicable to india also maybe with a phase lag of 5 years that's what will be there and what we have seen there, there is that uh, ev suitability is there for the uh, lighter vehicle below 18 ton as well as for the buses this uh, ev technology is very much suitable whereas uh, 18 ton above vehicles which are uh, uh, i would say medium and the heavy commercial vehicle i think ev uh, with the current uh, charging infrastructure it may not be the most suitable thing because vehicles are running 2000 kilometer uh, for one trip from like Delhi to uh, Chennai or Delhi to Bangalore vehicles are running for 1500 to 2000 kilometers. Now ensuring the charging infrastructure on the route is going to take time. Which, uh, actually it will come after 5 years, 7 years, 10 years it will come that thing. But in the I would say the medium term this is going to be a challenge. To avoid that thing, so our uh, uh, technology roadmap for the alternate fuel is that uh, we want to keep that uh, EV for the uh, light vehicles below 18 ton and buses and above 18 ton we want to go for the hydrogen fuel, hydrogen internal combustion engine and that also we are developing that thing and uh, I am very happy to share that our prototypes are already ready which were shown in the last auto show also and uh, now uh, the engines are being taken to the vehicle and vehicle validation calibration work is in progress today okay. and very soon I think we will go to a level where we can be ready with the customer trials. So okay. this is one strategy on the hydrogen uh, internal combustion engine and apart from that definitely CNG, LNG which are the, I will say that those are the transit technology which are here and now and they may not exist after 5-7 years. So those technology anyhow we are having the product from 5 ton to uh, 55 ton we are having the products and uh, they are uh, in LMD uh, almost uh, 3 to 400 vehicle we are selling every month in uh, CNG. So those technology are anyhow transit is there. If I look at the long term I will say that hydrogen internal combustion engine and uh, EV both are very very uh, pragmatic technology for Indian market. and. Uh, Fuel cell technology is still an expensive proposition and per kilowatt cost if I compare between uh, EV and uh, fuel cell cost is almost double for the uh, fuel cell technology and technology is also not mature in India as well as uh, anywhere else in the world still people are working on that that step we will take later on but today on two technology we are putting all all our bets and we are working very very uh, rapidly on those technologies. Okay. You mentioned about uh, you know the FMCG pharma sector and uh, you know the e-commerce sector yeah. that is uh, you know taking up. So you, you mentioned about uh, these uh, early adopters like the you know companies who understand last mile, the company yes. who understand total cost of ownership. Yes. So how is going you, you going to plan your production? The vehicle we saw. Uh, when will this vehicle be readily available in the market? How much production capacity do you have? Where will you manufacture this? And what is the roadmap to you know ensure that you have vehicles as per the demand? So this vehicle uh, uh, already our board had improved approved the investment about two years back on the buses and uh, on the trucks thing. So we have made all the investments in our bus plant, in our truck plant and you know that state of the art uh, our Bhopal plant where we manufacture uh, the light like light and medium duty vehicles from 5 ton to 18 ton. So we already have created the facility there for this uh, vehicle manufacturing and whatever vehicle you saw today that is actually made on the production setup and the Bhopal assembly line which is the final assembly line. So I can say that our facilities are ready for manufacturing this vehicle. So we are looking at uh, as we proliferating into the one market and uh, then uh, uh, go to the next market like that in a very slow fashion we will be proliferating and uh, now we already started getting the uh, customer interest, we already started getting the orders and uh, this month onward we are going to supply the bulk number also from to our customers. Perfect, perfect. Any technology in terms of EVs that you think your vehicle when ready can be exported to other markets where we are EV ready for other markets? Uh, absolutely because uh, we have benchmarked our technology with Volvo group technology also for the EV and we find that uh, our technology is uh, other than the battery 
overall technology is similar to what they are using and they have also gone through our technology and given their comments and they also find that uh, this is absolutely suitable for Indian market as well as some of the developing market. And as you know, we are exporting to the Middle East and South Africa. From already we are getting the orders for EV. The Mars is coming from that thing. So there are the, uh, in the Middle East for left hand drive as well as in uh, South Africa for right hand drive. So we are converting this product to the left hand drive and right hand drive, uh, some feature upgradation in the right hand drive. That project we have already taken on and maybe six to eight months, our first few vehicle will go there to those market. And uh, answering your question, we are getting ready for export market where we are already present and uh, whatever changes are required to suit that market we are doing and then so that we can supply this vehicle. And we have got definitely planned to supply this vehicle to the overseas market also, both buses and trucks.